So here are your instructions for the last phase of the assignment. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the same processes that we saw for phase one, meaning that I'm going to set up energy settings on the Analyze tab back in Revit. And uh, there'll be a few subtle changes that I make there. But once I've done that, I'm going to run the generate and then the optimize functions just like I did before when I was analyzing just the masses and the orientation. Uh, that part will look the same. Uh, what's going to be different is when I actually get to this location here and describe the insight feature. So uh, what I'm going to be aiming for here is a 20% reduction in the energy use intensity. That's the objective behind the assignment. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to demonstrate this on my... Uh, sample file here which is uh, produced by Autodesk. This is the RAC which just means Revit Architecture Basic Sample Project. I'm going to pull that up. You can use your capstone files for this if you like. If you want to follow along with this relatively light simple file I'll show you where you can locate that. And um, yeah you guys aren't doing any sort of work set sharing correct? You're just working on your own so we don't have to worry about that issue. Okay so you could just follow along with your capstone file if you are going to do this with something that was set up with work sets, I would highly recommend separating it from the work set environment so that you're not uh, you know, feeding your, uh, your other group mates work that you're doing or tampering that capstone file. So just keep that in mind. It won't really affect you guys so much because you're all working on your own, but something like this I would recommend separating uh, from the work set file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to my 3D view and again, this is similar to what we did before. Uh, in the 3D view, I'm going to go to the Analyze tab. And on the Analyze tab, over towards the right, same tools that we used before when we were doing just the mass and um, orientation tests. I'm going to make sure, for starters, that I've specified a location. So it's just this little globe with the orange-red kind of pin there. I'll click on that. And I'm going to get this as close to my project address as possible. So I'll just type in Calgary. And it'll give me the option of doing the city or the region. So I'll just take the first option. And it'll take me now to the map. And I just basically pick the weather station that's closest to my site. For most of us, this will probably be just this 14882. So we can choose that and click OK. That loads in all the information about the climate and also about the position of the sun. Once I've done that, then like I did before, I'm going to go to energy settings. And once you've activated energy settings, this is where we're going to switch now from analyzing the conceptual masses to the building elements. So when we did phase one and we were just concerned with the shape of the building and where it sat in relation to the sun, we just used the conceptual masses. We only wanted to analyze the shape. But now what we're doing is we're telling Revit or we're telling the uh, analysis process to use the Revit information, specifically all the properties associated with the walls and the floors and the roofs. So you may have noticed when you're building wall, uh, wall types, floor types, for example, there will be R values that are being tracked and conductance values and things like that. We're now using that information. So first step, use building elements. And then just make sure that you click here beside advanced other options and specify the type of building that you're actually going to be analyzing. And this is, of course, relevant because it'll have an impact on the way that the occupants use the space. So for you guys, just single family. And then we're not going to worry about any of these other settings. Don't worry about what you see here with regards to percentage glazing because it's not using this setting. It's actually using the physical representation of your window openings from your, from your Revit file. So I'll click OK here two times to get out of this environment. Everything's all set up now. And I can now click on this button here, which is the little kind of blue isometric house with the little yellow light bulb. And that creates the energy model. And I just confirm that by clicking Create Energy Analytical Model. This is a fairly light file, so this should just complete within, there we go, that quick. If it's a heavier file, it might take a little bit longer. Don't be alarmed if with your model you're seeing 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then for some of the larger you know, apartment building type projects uh, that your fellow students are working on, it could even take several hours to do that. So just be aware, depending on how light the building is, um, it might, it'll take different amounts of time to finish that. Um, beside that, or below that, sorry, we have then the button that says Generate. So if you click on Generate, it'll ask you for confirmation if you want to actually use the energy analytical model that you just made. And that's the option that we want. We haven't done anything since, so there's no need to update. 
we'll just take the first option. So use existing energy analytical model. And one more confirmation just to drive you crazy. And now it'll just be a little bit of a display down here in the bottom left. The slider indicates the progress. It's done. It doesn't look any different. So don't, don't expect that anything fantastic will have happened with that last step. But we're now ready to optimize. So up here, back on the energy optimization panel, there's a little button that says optimize. Make sure you're logged in. And once you click optimize, then you'll see it send it off to your browser window. And it'll kind of pause and spin here for a bit and it's thinking away about the one that you just sent. Now this again might take 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, this won't pop up right away. I believe that if you do this in sort of non-peak times where there's a little bit less traffic on the servers, you can expect faster results. But just anticipate that it's going to probably take 15, 20 minutes, whatever. And in the end, you'll get something that looks like this. So I'll click here on this tile, and this is just for an analysis of the same project that I did earlier. And what you do, what you see now, uh, as a result of clicking that button, is a uh, all of the insights that are available for your building. Like before when we did our analysis on the massing and the orientation, we see a little display here in the upper left indicating in this case the cost. This tells us that uh, our building will cost $27.10 United States dollars per square meter per year. And if we just click on that, it'll switch it over now to an energy use intensity. So the acronym is EUI. And in this case, we have a building that's doing 258 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to use this number as a base, and it will describe it down below here in this window. And I'm just going to call these little windows down below widgets. So in this particular widget, it's displaying that benchmark of 258 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. What I want you to do is I want you to reduce this number for your building by 20%. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to click on these various widgets below. For example, you can look at this one here that says window wall ratio for the southern walls. If you click on that, you'll see this window that displays your initial benchmark up above. And then down below in the triangle, it displays that your current window wall ratio. So based on the way that you built your Revit model, it's telling you that you have a window wall ratio on the south of 71%. These additional little circles here, these little nodes, will display what you could achieve if you had the reduced levels of glazing that it describes. So for example, with this one right beside, it tells me that if I drop from 71% to 65%, I can reduce the energy use intensity by 4.09 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. And if I go further to 50%, down to 40, I'll be able to achieve further reductions. Now, you might look at this and get greedy and think, well, if I drop down to 0% glazing, then I can have a reduction of 26.9 units. Well, what kind of a building would you have if it was 0% glazing, right? You'd have a bit of a bunker. So keep in mind that you still want to do something that would actually be done in the real world. We're not going to make a building that has no windows. No, we would want to occupy it. So what you could do is you could say 50% is still pretty close to my initial design intention. And if I go with 50%, I will have achieved a reduction of four kilowatt hours per square meter per year. After hovering over it to see what the advantage is, then you just click on these little tiny little grips down at the bottom. And then you just reduce it so that you can see just that blue range over your new standard. So if I go at this one and I drop from 71% down to 50% and I achieve that four kilowatt hour per square meter per year uh, reduction, now uh, I'm a little bit closer to my goal, which remember is to achieve a 20% reduction overall. So if you have a 400 kilowatt hour uh, per square meter per year energy use intensity, you're aiming to get down to 320. Okay, so that's the goal. That's what I want to see you achieve. You're going to do it by choosing various uh, widgets. And then what I want you to do is I want you to compile that. Now, you're two years into this, so I'm going to trust in you to give me something clear. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to describe the font choice and the indents and what program. I don't even care which program you use. Just clearly describe for me 
and this is step five, how you achieved that 20% reduction. So I want to see text and visual, so do some screen captures. If, for example, uh, back there on the widget here, let's say that you choose to go with better glazing on the north side, and maybe you drop down and choose what they're recommending here, a triple low E. So show that reduction, and then use a tool like, for example, your snipping tool, and just like you've done before, just make that little graphic, and then include that in your Word document, let's say, and then give me a little write-up to tell me exactly what it is you've done. It's probably going to require five or six of these little widgets, um, but I want you to drop the energy use intensity down 20% and then describe for me exactly what you've done to achieve that. 